Now we're in the Metropolitan Museum of Art looking at a floor mosaic but it is rendered up on the wall. I guess it wouldn't be very good conservation practices to have everyone walk all over it now, would it? This is probably part of a floor in a public space in the sixth century. And what is so striking about it is this figure of a woman looking out at us, or she would have originally been looking up at viewers. She's about three or four times the size of a person. And it's just so striking, those wide eyes that gaze out at us. Exactly. And she clearly is uh, rendered as a elite personage. She has some rather nice jewelry on and a cloak and she holds a tool though. So she's rendered as a aristocratic woman, but she holds the tool that would have been used to measure a Roman foot. And that ties in very nicely with the inscription we have by her head. Although one might think at first that this is a portrait, we know from the inscription by her head that this woman is a personification of an abstract idea. Those letters are the beginning of the Greek word kitesis, which means foundation. And this is, for that reason, one of the most common personifications that we encounter in early Byzantine art. But it's also possible that it has sort of a broader, more abstract meaning, because sometimes ketesis appears even on the floors of churches, where maybe it meant something more general like creation. On her right, we see a young man approaching with a cornucopia, an overflowing cornucopia in his hands. And there's a word by him too, kali, which means good. And it is thought that probably originally another man approached her from the opposite side and that that word was part of a phrase that meant good wishes. And we know from other excavated context that sometimes these personifications appeared in a whole ensemble, like in the Constantinian villa near Daphne. It appears next to one of manliness. This artistic practice of representing abstract concepts uh, with figures, uh, personifications, it's an element that exists before Christianity in the ancient world uh, in a pagan context, but it doesn't really go away once Christianity becomes dominant. It is something that carries carries across that transition and continues to be used. Absolutely, even in later Byzantine art, there are biblical manuscripts like the Parasalter that incorporate personifications. It's just part of signaling these layers of meaning that the educated viewer would have been able to pick up on. Yeah, I think about a, a common a common place that you find this uh, through much of the history of Byzantine iconography is the uh, icon of theophany, of Christ's baptism, in which you often see the Jordan River depicted as a man. And that stretches from the early Byzantine period onward. From a distance, this might look like a painting, but when you get up close to it, you can see that it is a mosaic made from thousands of little tesserae, small pieces of marble and even glass that seem to be used to accentuate depictions of jewelry. Exactly, and the tradition of floor mosaics goes way back through antiquity into archaic Greece, but it's really in this period that there also start to be wall mosaics. But this is very much a part of this tradition where public spaces of a home would have been richly adorned. In our modern period, we're so used to seeing images and hanging images on our walls. We think about uh, hanging pictures in our homes, hanging paintings and other artworks in galleries and in museums. But this is a, an example which shows us how common it was in the ancient world to put images on the floors that you would walk on. When these entered the Met, it was two separate mosaics, and it was only through looking at pictures of the dealer's storeroom that they were able to figure out that they were part of the same ensemble. So who knows, maybe they'll find the other piece sometime. This is a common and unfortunate practice that often happens in the art world where ancient and, and medieval pieces of art get split up so they can be sold for more money on the art market. So it's really a wonderful thing that the Met has been able to reassemble these two split images. So by depicting this abstract concept of foundation uh, as a beautiful woman uh, wearing fine clothes and adorned with beautiful jewelry, I suppose it was a way of uplifting this uh, ideal of donation, of building, in a way that people would have seen it as a value toward which they should aspire. Or, on a more banal level, maybe it just provided a lively topic of conversation in the dining room that it once adorned.